Hello everyone, uh, this guitar lesson is entitled Oh, there's a snake on my guitar! The reason being, I think the trouble that uh, people have, especially when trying to sort of play lead and fly around the fretboard, is that uh, everything's been grouped into little boxes for them. Like, you know, you know you've got a D here. Okay, and then you know you've got a D as an A shape at the fifth fret. And then up at the tenth fret you've got, you know, you know, an E shape. Well, it's a barred E shape, so like an F shape. So you've got those, but it's like, what am I going to do to join them together? Well, guess what? All these chords aren't actually separate. They're actually all joined together. The chords, all these chord shapes are like just one big snake that crawls across the fretboard all the way, which is why I call it snake on my fretboard. So you see, here's the D. So look, there's that arpeggio. To get a little bit confusing, uh, the D is actually derived from a C shape chord, really. The D's just the top little bit. So if you do that, you're basically shaping a C shape chord. So there's the snake, it starts here. There's your D, so. You land on another D there at the fifth fret, and then you go into the D as an A shape, so. Uh, whoops. That was a bit wonky. But you see what I mean? So now you've gone like this, you've gone from here. And then. And then you keep going till you get to that tenth fret, and here's that other shape. There you go. So all of a sudden you can join this together and start playing lead all over the place. Is that making sense? And then you've got all the way, all the way back to the top, you're back to the D shape again. So it go, there's the D shape, there's the A shape, the little A shape, there's the big A shape, and there's the E shape, or the bar D shape. It looks like an F, but anyway, you know what I'm saying? You can just do it as triads here. Okay, but you start messing around with these. You see, you can go all over the place with it, right? And that's just one chord. What happens when you bring the second chord in? So let's go with A minor. And there's A minor. So then you know you've got another A minor at the fifth fret. And then work the way up that scale into the another shape, into the next, into the D minor shape there. It's just making sense. So there's your A minor as an A minor shape. Follow it all the way along. And just, you know, link it up to the next part of the snake. And then into the next. So this is a big snake now. Is here at this. See what I mean? So you just start joining these things up and it's no longer separate boxes, all kind of separate from each other. It's like a big snake. So you've got the D... D the D-shape snake, snaking its way across the fretboard, and then the A minor shape there. So now you've got these two chords. So if you wanted to do some little skitty sort of sort of um, lead bit with a, with a D and then an A minor, let's just say the chord sequence just went like this. There's the A minor to the D. Okay, so there's so let's just say it's that. Um, what you can have now then is um, you could just play this kind of. Okay, let's go. You know. There might have been a bad note there, but anyway. I'm just completely out of limit here. So that's just joining everything up. And then what if you added a G? Let's say I've got a song that's actually three chords. It's um, called Into the Abyss, but it, that's irrelevant. There's a G. No, let's do it properly. G, G, A minor. So you can start with a G here. This is the G snake. So you can start, I'm actually just basing this on the, um, the major pentatonic, but you know, just let's do it as a scale. So there's a G flying around with a G and then into, uh, into a D. To an A minor. So yeah, so
So there's three different snakes all snaking their way across the fretboard with the chord shape down here. There's your G basically like that. Play G there, play G there, up here. So you can join those up. There's your G into that G arpeggio there. Landing on there, there's another G note. Into the G as an A shape. And then all the way back up to here to the... See what I mean? So you've got all this scope. So there's a snake and then you've got the A minor. And then the D. I realise I might have said those the wrong way around. It doesn't matter. The principle's always the same. There's all these different chords that are all joined up. They're all connected. It's just like one big chord. This D chord is just one big chord. It starts... And then the A minor. So... Um... So... So... Well, I'm just losing the plot here. I went into pentatonic then. Right, so here's the A minor. I mean, so working up the scale. So back into that. Then. So it's just one big snake, there's the chord, and then of course the D, so. Did we do that one already? Oh yeah, so the G, so. So, um. Into the other G chord there. snakes together there's no such thing as separate chords they're all joined up with each other well there is such a thing as separate chords obviously you can't deny that but what I'm trying to say is you know they're all here for your perusal and um, I know this has been a long and convoluted video but the idea is just to get used to snaking around and then you can just fly around and you know that you're just falling within those shapes so if you just go there there's D there's D there's D there's A minor there's A minor there's A minor like that there's so many different ways of playing chords on the guitar, like the A minor like that. The A minor like that. The A minor like that. There's an open chord, the A minor like that. You know, up here. Or here. 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 And up here. See what I mean? And the G. There's a G. So the G's all over the place. See what I mean? So that's how it all pieces together. I bet this has confused the shit out of you. If you've enjoyed this lesson, please let me know in the comments. I just did this as an ad-lib lesson. I didn't think about it, really, apart from I wanted to talk about snakes on my fretboard. Uh, because the snakes on the fretboard, snaking your way up and down the fretboard is how you start to play lead. You incorporate all those things. You know, don't think about things as separate boxes. It makes it very chunky. This is all very smooth and very um, organic. You know, you can flow around the fretboard from the top to the bottom once you get used to working with the shapes of the chords. But there's all, wherever there's a chord shape, there's going to be, you know, lead, lead guitar notes. Of course there is. There has to be. There's no way around it. You know, logically, it wouldn't make sense if there wasn't. Anyway, my name's Cy Gennaro. Um, I do the Cy Gennaro show, as you probably know. Do share this if you've enjoyed it. Um, I hope it's been useful. I'll do more lessons and tips on things if you like. Um, Anyone who's wondering about this guitar, it's an Indian guitar called Zoom. Um, I've never seen another one, but someone gave it to me quite randomly. I'm going to get a nice pickup put on it because I really like this guitar. In, in some ways, I prefer it to my Gibson J45. Maybe because it's light and skinny, a bit like me. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching and uh, have a lovely day. I'll uh, be back sometime soon.